Today we're going to be talking about 1968. Just this year alone has a lot of stuff to go into. So uh, first we're going to start with an enemy attack in Vietnam, uh, the Tet Offensive. Uh, we're going to talk about two major assassinations as well as a political convention which I know doesn't sound that exciting, but it was a Democratic Party convention where people surrounded the building in Chicago. Tens of thousands of demonstrators tried to force themselves in to influence a political election. And yeah, that was in the United States. So let's start with why things were so heated. So remember, polls showed in 1967 that most Americans still supported the war in Vietnam. President Johnson, meanwhile, promised the American people on television all the time, we're winning this thing. I mean, come on, look at them. Like, compare them on a map to us. Vietnam can be ruled. We're winning hearts and minds. Democracy will work there. The United States will win. Our cause is just. In 1968, in the Vietnamese New Year, what they call Tet, every year of the war, from the 1950s through to 68, every single year for the New Year, the Viet Cong, the Viet Minh, pause and celebrate. The war has been called off every single time for who knows how long. They just don't fight during the Tet, their new year, until 1968. There was a coordinated attack by the Viet Cong. Remember, these are the insurgency. They're the rebels. And they were able to, at the same time, attack 100 towns and cities, as well as 12 American bases. That's almost all of South Vietnam, all at once under attack. Now here's the thing, who won this? America. We absolutely crushed them in this battle. It was an American victory, but here's the thing. Even though they lost, they were able to demonstrate that they could cause massive chaos for an entire month, four years after the United States has begun its occupation. That's all they had to do. You know, let me give you a couple other examples from movies. Braveheart, William Wallace invaded Southern England, got his butt kicked. Yeah, sorry, William Wallace. You just got to watch the movie. Got his butt kicked. But you know what it did? It demonstrated to the English that the Scottish were a force to be reckoned with. If you're the defender and you manage to attack, that's a win. Doesn't matter if you actually pull it off. Second example, General Lee in the American Civil War launched two invasions of the North. Both were defeats. Both resulted in withdrawals. The point is he managed to attack the North twice. That's significant. When Vietnam erupted during the Tet Offensive, four years after U.S. occupation, That's when many Americans began to feel this war was unwinnable. Strategically, again, massive defeat for the Viet Cong. Politically, this is a win. New war. The Viet Cong simultaneously attacked just about every major city and town in South Vietnam. In one day, they increased the scope of the war dramatically. Howard Tuckner was there. The war came to Saigon early in the morning of January 31st. The first target was the symbol of the American presence in Vietnam, the United States Embassy. About 20 Viet Cong had invaded the embassy compound and were now battling American Marines and military police. 
the Viet Cong had penetrated to the center of what was supposed to be the most secure city in Vietnam. On the fifth day of the battle for Hue, the Marines moved out from the fortified army compound that had stood the original attack and advanced into the empty, abandoned buildings of what was Hue University. Hue, the ancient imperial city. It is to Vietnamese what old Boston is to Americans, where many of its country's leaders are born or educated, where many returned to celebrate Tet a week ago when the fighting began, where many remain hidden in the unknown interior of... What's the hardest part of it? Not knowing where they are, that's the worst thing. Riding around the running the sewers and the gutters anywhere. Be anywhere. Just hope you can stay alive day to day. I just want to go back home and go to school. That's about it. You lost any friends? Quite a few. We lost one the other day. The whole thing stink really. For days now they've been fighting their way, bloody inch by inch, down Leloy Street. And all that time they could see down the street a flagpole, and on it was a Viet Cong flag. Much is left in shambles. The Marines advance building after building, the North Vietnamese retreat building after building, giving up nothing without a fight. Still going on just a few yards away, Marines have risked their lives to pull down this symbol. No one is quite sure where the American flag came from in the middle of a battle. Like so many things, when you need something, someone just happens to have it. There was no bugler, and the other Marines were too busy to salute, but not often is a flag so proudly raised. All right. All right, give me this, eh? Yeah, that's what gets me. We're supposed to be uh, hard charging, man. We're supposed to go out and get them. I think if they pull a, a good search and destroy up here, we could clear them. Well, I don't know. You get out there 50 feet and you're lost already in the jungle. I mean, it looks pretty clear from here. It's just a constant siege here, and you don't you don't know exactly when the incoming's coming, and uh, you don't know how much it's going to be from day to day. And... <sighs> How would you compare it to other places that you've served in Vietnam? Well, this is uh, this is the worst I've been at. Uh, it's uh, you just most of the time you can't get anything done because there's there's too much incoming. You can't get out much at all. It's just too dangerous to get out. And uh... so you just heard it from the perspective of the people that were there. Love those interviews with the soldiers. I, I like the one where he said, "Just the whole thing stinks." You know, that's about as good a summary as I've ever heard of this. You know, or you know, you definitely saw those uh, those soldiers were were affected by these things. And even though, again, even though this is a military defeat for the Viet Cong, it's a huge political victory. Before this. The American public was generally supportive of the war. After this, it's it's almost evenly divided. Mainstream media begins to openly criticize the war. Um, Johnson appointed a new Secretary of Defense, Clark Clifford, who studied the situation. You know, kind of think of like the Mueller reports gave like a long study of this complex situation, and his simple conclusion was this war could not be won. You know, just like Napoleon said, it's one thing to conquer a country, it's quite another to rule it. And the Viet Cong were unwilling to lay down their weapons. They would fight until they were left alone. When the Clifford Report was released, when the Tet Offensive was understood, Johnson's popularity plummeted. 
and most Americans disapproved of his handling of the war. In fact, in 1968, Lyndon Johnson announced that he would not seek or would not accept the Democratic Party's nomination for president. So Senator Eugene McCarthy ran on the Democratic ticket as a dove, meaning that if elected, he would end the war in Vietnam. Running against him for the Democratic Party's nomination was Senator Robert Kennedy. Bobby, John F. Kennedy's brother, entered the race and was leading a popular movement. In 1968, in the spring of that year, Dr. Martin Luther King was shot and killed by a white supremacist named James Earl Ray in a hotel in Memphis, Tennessee. The response to that tragedy was absolute chaos. Riots in over a hundred cities in the United States. Robert Kennedy, meanwhile, um, who had deep connections with the civil rights movement, who actually gave the eulogy at Dr. King's funeral, was fatally shot just two months later because of his support of the nation of Israel. This is how the year of 1968 began. There were major demonstrations on college campuses all around the country protest movements were growing in their intensity. Our country was in a very unstable situation. So this is an odd predicament. You know, one of our greatest spiritual leaders was murdered. One of our greatest political leaders was murdered. And now the Democratic Party has to figure out what it's all about. You know, it's called a plank, meaning what is going to be this party's position on this particular issue. So meanwhile, uh, Vice President to Lyndon Johnson, Hubert Humphrey, won the Democratic nomination. But at the convention where he was to publicly accept the party's nomination for candidacy, there were over 10,000 demonstrators outside of the building in the city of Chicago. And so I'm going to show you footage of the Democratic National Convention in 1968 in Chicago, Illinois. And you're going to see protesters trying to force their way into the building and police beating them back and shooting tear gas. And inside the building, representatives from each state of the political party are trying to decide, should the Democratic Party be the party that wants to end the war in Vietnam? Or should it stay the course?
same year Richard Nixon won the Republican nomination for candidacy in the 1968 presidential election and his campaign was based on the promise to restore law and order to end the Vietnam War with dignity what he called peace with honor there was a third party candidate, by the way, George Wallace. You guys remember him? That's the governor that stood in front of the University of Alabama so that African American students could not enroll. The guy who you saw in that Forrest Gump clip who gave the speech about military dictatorship because African Americans were going to be attending his university. That man ran for president as a third party candidate on a separatist ticket. And he won several southern states. His basic campaign was the South will rise again, and he won several southern states. He was actually shot while campaigning. Uh, he lived through it, but he was, he was shot while campaigning. As a state's rights, um, segregation, um, white supremacist candidate. So Nixon won the presidency 